Hey guys, it's your boy FTL back again with another video. Today it's a quick roundup of the games over the weekend. Well, a few of the games that you know caught my eye over the weekend. I will be doing this every Sunday, putting a video like this up. I will like to have a name for this series. I haven't got one, but if you can come up with a good one please leave it in the comments below let me know and i'll probably use it and if i do use your um you know your name um, for my series then i will give you a big shout out in my next video and say thank you don't forget to join my fantasy um league my ftl fantasy football league i'll leave the code here um where you can use that to join and the link to the premier league official fantasy football website in the description below where you can also join let's take a look at the first game i'm going to look at this week which is the manchester united v southampton game obviously as you know already manchester united won 2-0 but the biggest talking point in that game was the one and only Zlatan Ibrahimovic two goals it's like four games four goals sorry in like three games absolutely amazing a penalty which to be honest I was not in doubt the 75,000 people there in the stadium was never in doubt the couple million people around the world watching it went in doubt and what did he do he buried it as he always does oh what a header by the by Zlatan absolutely amazing like and to think that this guy came on a free transfer from PSG absolutely amazing Arsenal fans you must be absolutely gutted free transfer and look at the map three goals two Premier League games absolutely amazing Pogba what a performance obviously he's a return the prodigal son Pog back and yeah he did make his return you know known because he's passing he you know shooting everything was defending was absolutely amazing from the guy and for once even though i'm a manchester united fan it was really good to see some attacking football from manchester united and marino looks to be doing a really good job with the squad let me know your thoughts in the comments below but also guys look what i've got here Ooh. Manchester United kit. Let me know who I should get on the back. I'm thinking it's obviously between Pogba and Zlatan. Not too sure. Let me know who I should get on the back, please. You never walk alone. Obviously, Liverpool pay Burnley and they lost 2-0 to two, you know, great goals from, I think it was Volks and Gray. One of those players was actually playing non-league football in 2012. So four years on, he's scoring against Liverpool. What a story. There's a lot of these stories. So if you are watching out there and you want to become a professional footballer, it does happen. Dreams can happen. Unfortunately, it obviously didn't happen for me, hence why I'm doing... Um, youtube videos but yeah anyway that's a story for another day not good enough from liverpool they had a great start i must say against you know arsenal last week you know beating them at the ms 4-3 but even in that game you saw you know they done pretty well to score the four goals but then conceded last week it was moreno who you know got absolutely ripped by the press and by myself um, yeah, I, I, Moreno, I'm sorry. Going forward with the likes of Coutinho and Firmino, you know, not too much of a problem. But in defence, I do feel like sometimes, you know, they do mess up. Let me know your thoughts, you know, on that. Klopp must be absolutely frustrated because I don't believe it's himself. It's his fault. Um, Nathaniel Klein made a mistake. A few other defenders made a few, you know, mistakes there, which caused them, the, you know, to lose the game at the end of the day. So it's not really Klopp's fault, but I would imagine he will be, you know, putting maybe Nathaniel Klein on the bench next week as he did with Moreno in this game. Manchester City. Whoa. 4-1 against Stoke. Aguero, come on Aguero. He's my striker, captain as well for my fantasy football league. So he's getting me those points um, so far this season. Catch 22 because he plays for the enemy, but then I need him to score for my fantasy football team. But yeah, that's kind of annoying. Aguero as well. He looks to be in form as always. But as I keep saying, Manchester City, I don't think they've got a replacement striker that will, you know, get the amount of goals that he would get if he gets injured. There is a new guy in the scene, Nalito, who's got the two goals just at the, you know, closing stages of that game. And he looks pretty good. Sterling. Now, this guy came in for 50 million um, for Manchester City. Manchester City bought him for 50 million, obviously, from Liverpool, as you know. And the thing with me is that he still hasn't lived up to that price tag. He has the potential, which under Guardiola, so far, he is now showing. Kelechi, 
obviously who set, um, set up one of the goals also for um, Nelito, signed a new contract. You Manchester City fans will probably be happy about that because he's pretty young and yeah, he looks to be a handful um, going forward for Man City. So yeah, it's looking pretty good for Man City right now, which as a United fan, I'm not happy about. West Ham played Bournemouth, West Ham winning 1-0, but guys, honestly, if you watch that game, I would rather watch paint dry. I would rather watch Bentner for 90 minutes. There's just so much other stuff I would rather do for 90 minutes than watch that game. Honestly, it was just absolutely boring. But Antonio got the one goal, um, and yeah, that's all I've got to say, that it was pretty shocking and um, boring. Fair play to West Ham, obviously, playing in their new stadium. That was like the highlight of it. It looked pretty cool, pretty nice, big and spacious. There were a few empty seats though, but yeah, the highlight of that was that it was boring. Pyatt didn't play, so yeah, that might have been why. Chelsea won 2 1 against Watford. And now, obviously, it does look like everything seems all merry, merry, all you know, lali lali da at Chelsea so far. Now, on the um, Conte, everything looks pretty good with Chelsea. You know, Hazard's having shots and you know, trying to make things happen on the pitch, which is really good because we did see that from him last season. So it's good that he's coming back to his old self. The, you know, the newcomers, Batshuari, he looks absolutely amazing getting on the score sheet. Now, to be honest, there's always one talking point in the Chelsea game that comes up every other game, at least once. This guy might be getting a suspension real soon. Yes, I can only be talking about the one and only Diego Costa. Yes, scored a winner, absolutely an amazing footballer, but Descent got a yellow card and then should have got another one for diving. Now, this dive was Olympic standard. It was, it was pretty good. It was a pretty good dive, like he should be in Brazil 2016 now jumping for either Spain or Brazil. A lot of referees would have seen that, you know, he's diving, you know, what he's done in the past as well with kicking out at people and they might be onto his case now in future games. And then if he gets a yellow card or a red card, he'll get suspended and Chelsea might have problems. It's funny how things have gone now, how important Costa looks to the Chelsea team because a few weeks ago, everyone thought he was going to leave for Atletico Madrid. Chelsea seem to be keeping up with the pace. And yeah, it's going to be a tight season this season, I think. What I'm going to do is say two words. And yeah, a lot of things are going to come into your head just from the two words. Here it is, David Moyes. It's not looking too good for Sunderland. They were fighting relegation last season. And at this rate, if it carries on, they will be fighting um, to stay up in the Premier League again. Um, they lost 2-1 to Middlesbrough, which isn't good enough. Stuani, who scored the two goals, they were absolutely amazing. One was a belter, like, a, you know, he just smashed it into the corner, top corner. And then the other one was a really good team goal. I think when you have, or rather, when Sunderland get Yanazai on loan from United and they're not getting the ball to him, then what do you expect? When he did get the ball in the game, he was actually making things happen. But for most of the game, he hardly got it. And I think that was one of the main reasons why they lost. Let me know your thoughts on, on that game. I didn't really catch most of it at all. But yeah, let me know your thoughts. Lastly, it's Leicester v Arsenal. Now, that game ended a boring nil-nil, but it wasn't that boring. I will say, though, Musa looks like an amazing signing for Leicester. He should have actually got a, a penalty. He beat the player. Went past him and I can't remember who the defender was, but they fouled him. To be honest, I think he should have got a penalty. But yeah, Arsenal still, it's not good enough. You know, losing the first game to, you know, Liverpool at home, then obviously not getting on the score sheet here. And Sanchez and those kind of plays are fully back. I think they definitely will step it up. But yeah, I don't think they've done enough in terms of signing a striker. If they are going to challenge for the title, I think they need a world-class striker. And until when that happens, I don't believe Arsenal can win a title. I just don't. It can't happen. It just will not happen. Got decent midfielders, you know, in Urza when he came on, he did all right as well. But in terms of, you know, challenging for the title, I think you need a Griezmann or, you know, someone. A, a really world-class striker up there. And I, until when that happens, don't think that's gonna happen, you know, don't think they can be challenging for the title. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below, what you guys thought about the games, really interested to know. Thanks for watching guys, and peace. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done either.